Ursun woke me to keep this world safe. I intend to do so. Welcome to Immortal Empires. Today we're going to be playing Boris Ursus. And let's go ahead and look at how he plays. Of course, playing on the Immortal Empires map as well. Uh, battle against the forces of chaos and construct religious buildings to accumulate devotion and invoke the Kislevite gods for powerful temporary effects. So we'll have to take a look at that. We can also use invocations of the motherland to gather supporters in favor of your faction and receive faction-wide bonuses. Also sounds quite strong. We can train formidable frost maidens and ice witches in the ice court granting them powerful traits before they become recruitable characters, which sounds nice. We can shape our heroes uh, how we want them then. And we can also appoint Atamons to govern your provinces and provide bonuses to the territory they oversee. So that's also quite interesting. Let's go ahead and close this down. Let's see what Boris actually has to offer. So we get diplomatic relations plus 30 with the faction of the Ice Court. Settlements in chaos wasteland climates receive reduced climate penalties and generate devotion. Uh, let's see. We don't actually start with a settlement and this is actually a suitable climate. However, as we progress into these lands here, maybe uh, it's not all suitable climate. So that would come in useful. We also get minus 50% construction cost for garrison and religion buildings. I do like that. Uh, we get minus one construction time for province, capital and settlement buildings and plus two recruitment rank for war bear rider units oh that's the big one right there war bear riders we're going to be having plenty of them when we finally get there and if we go ahead and look at boris's uh ability here we also get minus 50 percent upkeep for war bear rider units which is nice as well plus seven leadership when fighting against warriors of chaos demons of chaos and norska we also get plus 9 melee attack for the same, and we are immune to Chaos Undivided Corruption and Chaos Wastes Attrition. So that's going to be uh, make traversing these lands here a bit easier. We do start off with a Patriarch as well. Let's go ahead and look at what trait he has. He is intelligent. So Hero Self-Defense, plus 5% chance of wounding aggressors. And plus 10% ambush defense chance. So that's, uh, it's okay there. Um, I would have preferred maybe some combat abilities, but that's fine. Uh, before we go ahead and attack this first army, let's go ahead and look at the motherland here. Now we could get Saliak. We gain one supporter when character gains a rank. Um, we get plus 20 growth and plus 8% casualty replenishment rate for all armies. The growth and casualty replenishment is nice. However, if we look at Urson here... Uh, we get five supporters when occupying a settlement, which we're going to be doing a lot of at the beginning. Uh, causes attrition to enemy armies within your territory could be useful. And we also get the Bitterness of Winter. It's a hex ability with three uses. And all the enemies within range lose leadership, speed, and vigor per second. So that could be useful. Uh, we have Daz. Again, one supporter generated when building a building. Income from trade and income from buildings. Probably won't go for that. We could go for Tor, plus two supporters when fighting a battle. We also get Wrath of the Bear, so it's an augment of three uses. Um, only one ally gets this, but base weapon damage and armor pierce and weapon damage increased by 50%. And we gain some melee attack. So I think we're going to go for Urson, just because the five supporters upon occupying a settlement is uh, really good. And we should be able to get to this first level here. Uh, Ten settlements occupied. I think that's uh, reasonable. So let's go ahead and invoke Urson because we knew we will take a settlement on this turn as well. And there we go. We have invoked the motherland in the name of Urson. Ensure that we focus our efforts on expanding our territory and supporters will flock to our cause. So that's a good start there. But first we need to go ahead and fight this starting army. Because we, we need to get rid of them and then take this settlement because we currently don't have a settlement. Uh, there we go. So what have we got? We've got some war bear riders. Uh, we've got two units of armoured Kossars. We've also got two Tsar Guard, which is very nice. A patriarch and then, of course, Boris himself. So let's jump in and go ahead and start the first fight of the series. Here we go, then. And um, because this is also a bonus series, I've decided we're going to experiment with doing a few more live battles as well. Um, so let's go ahead and sell up our army for the battle here. I think we should also just space them out a bit. Uh, should be fine. Something like this, uh, I'm sure is okay. And then we can go ahead and put these guys in here. They're probably going to be quite squishy um, because it is early in the game. 
And let's go ahead and put our war bear riders here as well. So let's go ahead and move everyone up. Of course, the demons here aren't going to be too aggressive. Let's go ahead and look at what Boris has to offer us. We have the Fury of Urson, base weapon damage plus 25% and armor pierce and weapon damage plus 25%. Uh, causes terror and goes on a rampage. That's only for him. And then if we look at our Patriarch, plus 5-6% charge bonus and plus 8 leadership. Uh, so that's something to look at there. Let's go ahead and move these guys back. Uh, just because... Uh, it should be fine actually. Just stay there cause some problems with the enemy they're getting a bit confused which is fine with me if we can get some shots off into the enemy as well this would be cool i think what we're going to do here is actually just charge straight in i'm not sure about boris yet and let's see leadership speed yeah that's looking good as well i might go ahead and move these guys up on the flanks and as these guys are getting in range let's go ahead and charge these chaos warhounds here it should be absolutely fine. So we could change enough the, these guys' speed here. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that's good. I need to charge these guys in as well. I'm going to go ahead and send Boris over to do this. Uh, let's also do this as well. I think that's absolutely fine. We can go ahead and activate this. I'm going to go ahead and activate this as well. The charge bonus is probably not too useful here. Let's go ahead and cycle charge these guys. These are going up. And there we go. This is looking good as well. So we carry on chasing the Chaos Warhounds. Then we can flank him and get a hit in from behind maybe. I don't think there's too much friendly fire coming in. Let's charge these guys back down. Uh, if you guys can line up here we could get a nice charge into the back of the enemy for sure. We might even be able to get a nice close up of that happening. In fact let's go ahead and get a cinematic shot here. There you go. You can see our war bear riders charging down the hill. They're going to send the demons flying, I imagine. There we go. Absolute carnage. Um, the Chaos Warhounds are also coming back. So we're going to need to tell these guys to turn around and fight them as well. It should be fine, though. Uh, this is all looking good. The demons here are actually getting quite weak. Oh, jeez. Uh, this side guard is looking fairly damaged. Let's try and deal with this. Of course, we don't want to lose our units. Maybe we can get on... Get off some shots here. I might just chase the Chaos Warhounds off into the distance. Luckily, this Sarg Guard is still okay. Took a fair bit of damage there, though. Let's try and move everyone off into here. Fad, let's put you back here. Uh, you have flaming attacks. No, you're on fire. Okay. That does not mean flaming attacks. I'm also going to get you guys out of here as well. If you guys just wait here. Ah, oh, the War Bear Riders are also on fire. Uh, demons are a little bit annoying to deal with, it seems. We could probably throw this down, actually. Um, I forgot about this. Boris now is on fire as well. Let's go ahead and do that. But we do manage to get the win there. So we took a, a lot of damage, a close victory. I'm not sure what the AI predicted us. Uh, but let's go ahead and end the battle. There we go. So we lost 59 models there. Not too bad, um, I guess. Got a close victory. Uh... Our Tsar Guard took more damage than I would have liked, but as for kills, um, very well-rounded here. Our War Bear Riders definitely getting in some kills. Once we buff them, hopefully they should be they should be wonderful. But of course, we need to get a Tier 4 settlement so we can recruit some more. But let's jump straight back to the campaign map. There we go. So 1,600 XP. We also got 1,800 gold and 23 devotion, which we can spend in the future. We also got a Feather Foe Talk. So we get a new passive ability there. All enemies in range lose minus 10 melee defense and minus 15 armor. But only if they are flying. That kind of sucks. Uh, we could get some uni uh, army replenishment here. Or we could go ahead and get the devotion. I think I might go ahead and get the replenishment. Just because of that Tsar Guard is fairly damaged. Let's go ahead and do that. We have won our first battle of the campaign here. Which is nice. And we do gain a new follower, Ritual Enforcer. Uh, seduce units, budget, minus 15% for enemy Selenesh armies in local region. And minus 2 corruption in the local province. Not the best, um, but we do get two of those followers there. One for each of Boris, Boris and our uh, Theodore there. Let's go ahead and call him Theodore. I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced. Now what do we want for Boris? I think I'm just going to jump straight in for Root Marcher here. 
uh, campaign movement range does feel Boys, very useful. And then for Theodore, I think we're going to go ahead and get some replenishment going. Although we could go straight into Urson's Roar and then Tor's Battle him here. Plus 40 melee attack for all allies in range it is huge. However, I think there'll be plenty of time to get that. I do want the replenishment rate. It's only 3%, but uh, we do need some replenishment for sure. So, what's the Tower of Torment looking like? It's only three units in the garrison. So, honestly, I really don't expect to have any trouble here. We could auto-resolve this, but maybe it's better to manually fight it, just to make sure this unit here doesn't take any more damage. So, I will go ahead and fight this battle manually here. Here we go, then. Uh, we're probably going to want to keep this Zargard out of the battle, so let's just move him back here. Uh, do some rearrangement of the army. Let's go ahead and put this Sargard in the middle. That's fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this armored Kossar unit over here. Uh, let's move just a tiny bit over because there are trees here. And we could, in fact, hide both of our war bear units in those trees if we wanted to. However, I think we might actually go for a flank. So if we go ahead and put these guys on this side, we're going to go flank. And then that's all looking good as well. We'll put this side guard behind just in case we want any reinforcements. And then let's go ahead and put these guys here to reinforce. Uh, it's all looking good. I think we have a battle plan here. So I think if we go ahead and position something like this. Move those war bear riders up. We should be absolutely fine. I don't imagine we're going to take too many casualties here. Uh, we'll have to wait and see though. You never know. Especially with my skill level in Warhammer. Uh, you can never really guess what's going to happen. Now, the problem here is these trees. In fact, I might go ahead and send them into the trees. Because if they're in the trees, we can't actually get much fire off on them. So, I'll have to see what happens here. Uh, I'm going to send in you guys like this. And then with you guys, I'm just going to charge you in to them. So, it looks like we have managed to distract them. That's all looking good. Uh, we could probably actually do this because it does slow their speed by 25%. So we can get some more shots in front of them. Uh, that's looking nice. Let's go ahead and send these wall bear riders um, out of the forest again as well. In fact, let's go this way. I think it'll be easier for them to get out that way. Uh, let's just line you guys up like this. Should be fine. Things are a bit... For the Let's go ahead and just rotate everything. There we go. If we can reposition this army, that would be good. Let's get them out of the trees, and then we should be able to get a better charge in as well. And then, yeah, that's fine. Lined up like this. Shouldn't do too much damage. Let's go ahead and send you guys that way. I'm going to send you this way. Should be fine as well. Get them in a little bit of a pincher movement. This war bear rider unit is already heavily damaged, though. So that was a good charge. Let's get them out. Let's go ahead and get them guys out as well. I think we're actually going to bring you guys over here. And then, same for you. Let's go ahead and bring you around the back here. Just to try and minimize a bit of the damage there. For they're going to take this battle. I thought they were a bit tankier than they have been. But it's okay. Now we're 20 seconds. We have another bitterness of winter as well. So we can slow down the enemy. As they come in range of our armoured Kossars. Which would be nice. This wall bear rider unit is also going into safety. I think what I'm going to do with him. Is actually bring him around this way. And then maybe we can get a counter charge in there. Around the flanks. It's, it's looking good. I think we're doing okay. Uh, we could send in Boris as well. It might just slow down the enemies some more. Let's go ahead and throw this down too. In fact, I might go ahead and do this. Let's do something like this. And I think it's time to go ahead and meet them in melee. Should be fine. Let's go ahead and activate Boris's ability. I guess we can go ahead and activate our charge bonus if we're going in here. Somehow we have a wall bear rider over there. We can charge him with these guys as well. Taking much more damage on a wood of light. Oh, we still have a war bear rider up there. Okay, that's why they're acting a bit weird. Um, let's see. Move these guys back just a bit so we're not engaged in melee. That's absolutely fine. These guys can now go ahead and join in melee. There we go. Okay, they're looking to burn out now. 
so it should be fine. If we toggle, toggle to melee here, I think that might be better. Uh, it does look like we're going to win this. There we go. Maybe a bit messier than it should have been, but we've done it. So it's absolutely fine. And this Zargar didn't take any damage, so that's nice as well. Let's go ahead and end the battle there. Decisive victory. So we did lose nine models. Not the end of the world. Again, our Warbear Riders getting some good kills in as well. Um, our Armoured Corsairs uh, also doing kind of okay. But let's jump straight back to the campaign map because we finally have our first settlement. There we go. 1,200 XP, 500 gold. Not a lot really. And 11 devotion. Although we did only fight three units. So I guess that's fair. And uh, we do gain a glittering scales. Plus four armor. Plus five melee defense. And a new ability. So all enemies in range lose five melee attack. That is incredible. Of course we are going to go ahead and occupy this settlement. So Boris has the glittering scales. I think that's a good pick up there for sure. And he's also gained a level up. So let's go ahead and level him up. Uh, do we want anything down here? So we could get plus three control in a local province. Uh, recruitment cost. Minus 30% attrition casualties well we're immune to the attrition we got a worry about right now so that's fine or well, minus three corruption so i don't think we're gonna bother anymore with the blue tree so what we could do we could go down his red tree to buff we could go down his red tree to try and buff warbear riders or we could down his go down his personal combat tree which if we take a look at is it's quite generic but when we have access to erskine here at level 11 maybe that would be very beneficial to us uh, we could also take heroic resilience so if there's any allies within less than 50 percent hit points around us they gain plus 14 melee defense and plus eight leadership that could be good well i think we might do those go down the red tree to go ahead and buff our warbear riders now let's go down his personal combat tree so i'm going to go ahead and give him some melee defense there we go we can always go down the red tree after we've done with this tree and this tree should be fine because we're gonna to have to wait a little bit and a way to get access to those bear riders chaos. now we are going to replenish a fair bit so that's nice uh, what i'm also going to do let's go ahead and recruit some kossar units uh, we do need some more units here because if we take a look we've got to go ahead to the monolith of the first lung next and then we've got to make a decision. Do we go straight for the capital or do we go for the burning monolith? I think we go for the capital just so we can start upgrading it ASAP. Now we can build here. We should either build a farm for plus 10 growth or I can build a roadhouse for plus 20 growth. I think I'm going to go for the roadhouse just because we need to get a tier 4 settlement ASAP for those warbear riders. So let's go ahead and build that for the growth. Should be absolutely fine. Now we can also get some research here. So we could again, usually I think people always go for ice sculpting first so you can get access to your frost maiden as soon as possible. But that plus 10 growth would also be useful. However, I think here, let's go ahead and get ice sculpting. And then we can unlock our first Frost Maiden, uh, which will be fun to check out that mechanic. I think that's everything else here. Yeah, we need to unlock this slot so we can get a Frost Maiden. Let's go ahead and check our diplomacy. I don't it think we have anyone time. in range. Uh, you do have Cracker Drac here. They don't really like us, though. Uh, let's see. We've got a Slaneshi faction there. We've got some Ogre Kingdoms and we've got some Zinch. So plenty of uh, demons around us. Nothing what? to be had here though. So let's go ahead to turn two and see what happens over the end turn. So not too much happening there over the end turn. Uh, Theodore did gain a rank up though. So let's go ahead and level him up. And now that we have replenished troops, let's get Urson's Raw. That just reduces the cooldown a little bit there. And then we're probably going to get tools battle him for that plus 40 melee attack. We could also go for this, which gives regeneration. Uh, but honestly, I, I don't think we need it. Uh, I might regret that later, but <laughs> we'll see. So let's go ahead and go up towards the monolith of the Festalung. I think we can still reach it if we stop inside our territory. So let's go ahead straight to the border here. Because that way can, we can recruit two more Kossar units as well. Uh, just so we have a bit more uh, firepower within our army. And we could sail south to take these suitable climates. But honestly, I want to fight back the demons of Chaos. 
does feel like a very Boris thing to do. If we check the motherland, we do already have five supporters because we did occupy a settlement. So that's good. And I think the idea here is we have to race um, the Great Orthodoxy because we're with the Ice Court, I believe. Um, we've got to race them all the way to the end here. And we'll have to see what happens when that happens. Um, but let's go ahead and check out Diplomacy. Probably nothing going on here. Yeah, Cracker Drek don't want anything. So that's all good. Uh, let's go ahead to turn three. Okay, nothing happening on the end turn there, but that's fine. Let's continue towards the monolith. Luckily, it is within range this turn, so we can go ahead and attack that. And there's no army there as well, so it should be quite an easy battle here. We could auto-resolve it, but I want to take as little damage as possible, so let's jump in and do another quick manual battle here. Here we are then. This should not be too difficult of a battle at all. Uh, let's probably set up over here just so that we... I uh, don't have to worry about the trees as much. And I think just doing something very simple like this would be uh, would be absolutely fine here. We can also have these melee guys uh, just on the flanks. That should be fine. Let's go ahead and reorder those actually. I'll set them up in a weird way. And then we also have Boris and Theodore here as well. I'm pretty sure Theodore is not how you pronounce it. But it's how we pronounce it now. And then if we want to we also have our wall bear riders at the back. Uh, so let's go ahead and move this army up. Should be absolutely fine. I think here is a good place to go ahead and set up camp. Let's go ahead and speed up time just a tad. Of course, we didn't have to fight this battle manually, but I thought uh, probably best just so we try and avoid as little casualties as possible. Uh, six seconds and then we have this as well, so we can slow down the enemy some more. That would probably be very useful. Let's go ahead and cast that just slow their advances down a little bit and then what I might do here is actually send out Boris and the Patriarch just so that they soak up some of the damage and um, I think it's better for them to soak up the damage rather than our other units here we might need to go ahead and send someone into there uh, let's go ahead and do this I think this is fine let's go ahead and send them out as well there we go so these guys are going to be engaged in some combat. That's fine. Uh, they are almost dead now. Let's go ahead and send Boris over here. Uh, the Patriarch's taking a bit of damage. So I'm going to move him out over here. Let's also go ahead and take these guys and put them on the flank. They can shoot into the back of the enemy then. That should be good. In fact, I think they can get a shot off from here. So let's go ahead and turn them around. Should be fine. A very quick and easy battle here. Let's go ahead and go for a close-up. Just for the final killing blows. And it's beautiful stuff. Just look at the war bear riders covered in blood. And there we go. There's the victory. Uh, our Corsair units, our armored Corsairs also getting off their gunpowder shots. Gunpowder and bears. What more could you want from a faction? Uh, beautiful stuff as we chase them down there. But let's go ahead and end the battle. Of course, another decisive victory for us. So we did lose three models. That's fine. Um, Theodore took most of the damage there. But it wasn't too much damage. He'll be able to replenish that on the end turn. And even though the Warbear Riders joined the battle late. They got plenty of kills still. So already without too many upgrades. They're very strong. But let's jump straight back to the campaign map. There we go. So 1,200 XP, 500 gold and 11 devotion. We also got an Ogre Blade. Plus 18% weapon strength. That is going to be really useful early on. Let's go ahead and occupy this settlement. And Boris does get that new weapon. So that's absolutely fine. That's uh, probably the guy I would want it to go to. Let's go ahead and level up Boris as well. Uh, let's see. We do have Brass Lunged. Uh, I don't think we really want that. So what do we want here? We can give him Charge Bonus, some Armor, some Hit Points, or some Melee Attack. Now, he does have 89 Armor. I think the Hit Points might be good here. Another 300 Hit Points could be useful. Also, armor is, cool, is, of course, useful as well. Uh, how resistant a unit is to missile fire and melee attacks. Whereas, hit points would just give us flat health. I think we're actually going to go for the armor. Let's go ahead and boost his armor. And then we can get the hit points after as well. Just for that extra defense, really, doubling down. So, let's go ahead and recruit some more Kossars. We could go ahead and get Kossavite Dervishes. Um, but let's go ahead and get Kossars. Because I'm about to dismantle this building. Just because we're going to build another roadhouse. 
because the thing we want is war bear riders and that means getting in as much growth as possible so we can upgrade the howling citadel to tier 4 asap so that's our main focus here now there's nothing else happening here we should have gained five more supporters as well which we can check here uh, we actually have 11 supporters here it says 10 so I'm not sure where the 11 came from, uh, but we do now have 10 supporters, so that's looking good too. Uh, just another 40, and then we can support the ice court, which would be nice. Do we have any diplomacy we can Onward. do? Uh, Cracker Drac is actually... I don't think it's really changing, but yeah, Cracker Drac isn't that fond of us. It's fine. Let's go ahead to turn 4. There we go, nothing really happening on the end turn timer again. It's quite a um, quite a peaceful, or passful, uh, passive opening here. Uh, I imagine there has to be an army up here. Uh, military presence, there we go. What about over here, military presence? So they do have two armies. So let's go ahead. I think we go straight for the capital now. So let's go ahead and march Boris up towards the Howling Citadel. Citadel, because we are going to want to take that next turn. If we go ahead and look at there, it's only an army of three, so that's going to be relatively easy to capture. So let's go ahead and recruit two more Kossar units, uh, slowly building up our army here. And then the, in the monolith of the Festerlung, we can go ahead and build that roadhouse. Although, what do we have here? We could also build some brine mining pans. We would get some income, minus 7% for some reason. Uh, we get some salt resource for trade and income from markets. Well, we're not got anyone to trade with right now, so I think we might just stick with the roadhouse. Um, it's fine. We can build that resource later on. I, I think this is going to be a very another I quick have... turn. Yeah, Cracker Drek doesn't want anything to do with us still. So let's go ahead to turn five. And, uh, next turn, hopefully, we should be in range of the Howling Citadel. There we go. And we got our first technology as well. So we can finally... Recruit our first Frost Mason. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that in the next episode for sure. But other than that, um, we have gained a rank, a rank actually for Theodore as well. But sadly, that's all I have time for today. We did gain our first two settlements. In the next episode, we're going to hopefully capture this entire province. And then we can either choose to deal with the Selena here, or we can deal with Zinch. So either way, it looks like uh, we've got battles to fight on both ends. So that could be quite fun and chaotic. But thank you for watching. I will be back tomorrow with another one. And I will see you next time.